Does anyone else have a collection of Raspberry Pis doing nothing? Well, let me introduce my Pi to Work series of videos. In this series, we'll take a look at some really useful stuff you can set up on a Pi to make them work harder for you. In this episode, we'll take a look at Pi Hole, which is a way of blocking ads on all devices in your network. So, how does it work? When you open a web page in your browser, the page tells the browser to load other things, such as images and ads. These elements often come from different servers than the actual web page. Your browser actually doesn't know where any of these servers are and uses something called DNS or domain name system to find that out. DNS is kind of like a phone book for the internet. It will return the IP address of a server for a given URL. This is where Pihole fits in. You replace your DNS server with the Raspberry Pi running Pihole and now it handles all the lookups of the IP addresses. Pihole has an automatically updating list of domains that serve up ads, so when any device on your network requests the IP address of a domain that normally serves up ads, Pihole will return a fake one to it. So if we take a look at this web page example from earlier, the ad elements won't be able to load. All you need to set this up is a Raspberry Pi with network connectivity that already has Raspbian installed. If you need instructions on how to set up your Pi, check out my earlier video on a completely headless Pi setup. I think it's one of the quickest and easiest ways to set up your Pi. Any Raspberry Pi should do, this is an old Raspberry Pi 2 a head lying around. Although it does work on wireless, I would recommend doing Ethernet if you can as it'll have less latency. Next we'll take a look at the software installation. First, SSH into your Raspberry Pi and put in the following command and press enter. I'll put the command in the description so you can just copy it from there. The installer will then go off and install some stuff. This is sped up 16 times and there's still this gap here where I'm waffling on so it'll actually take a minute or two. You'll then come to the interactive part of the installer. The first few options are just things you need to click through so press the enter or return key to just skip past these steps. The first thing to set is the upstream DNS provider. Pihole will use this to look up any names that aren't on the blacklist. Just pick Google if you're not sure which one you want. Next is about selecting protocols. You can just click OK on this one too. Next is about setting a static IP address. You've two options here. If you click yes, it will take the IP address that it already has and make that its static IP address. Or you can click no and set your own one. The warning message here describes the potential issue of keeping your current address and making it your static one, that basically your router could give it to somebody else. As per the setup video I linked earlier, I've already made this Pi have a sticky DHCP address, so this won't be an issue for me. Next it'll ask about installing the web admin interface and the log queries. I answered on to both of these and I recommend you do the same. It will then go downloading some more things and finishing the installation. This took about 4 minutes for me. And then when you see this screen, your installation is complete. It describes two ways of getting to the web interface, but only the IP address way will work until we've done the network setup. It also shows a web page login password. You can either take note of that, or I'm going to show you now how to change it. To change the password, again, put it into your Pi and type in pihole-a-p and enter in your new password. At this stage it's worth logging into the web interface just to confirm that it's set up properly. Go to the IP address of the Pi forward slash admin and you should be able to log in. Next we're going to look at the networking setup. This means we need to talk a little bit about how networking works. In your home network you have a router and every time you connect a new device up to it, it needs to find out its address. It makes a DHCP request on the network that the router responds to. Along with the address the device should use, the DNS server it should use is also sent back in this response. In the majority of cases, the DNS server is set to the router's IP address. The external DNS server that the router uses can normally be configured on the router. This leaves us with two possible places to put Pihole in. We could put it in as the response in the DNS server, or we could make it the external DNS server that the router uses. While both of them will work, setting the external DNS to be Pi-holes is the better option. That's because the devices won't make another DHCP request until their DHCP lease expires. 
This means if you ever needed to change the DNS server, it might take up to a day for all your devices to start working properly. If you make the change to the external DNS, it will happen instantly. I can't really show you how to configure this part on your router because all routers will be different. For me, it was under a setting called DNS. I was able to replace one of the servers with the IP address of the Pi and then I removed the second server. If you have the option, clear out your DNS cache as well because some ad servers might already be saved. If you don't, don't worry, they'll soon expire anyways. I've talked about it on live streams a couple of times, but I actually have two internets in my house. On my second router you can't configure the DNS at all, you can't configure it in the DHCP response or the external DNS. Pihole has a solution for this too, and you do it by disabling the DHCP server on your router. Then you go to the Pihole web configuration, go to Tools, DHCP, and enable the DHCP server. You'll see they give a big red flashing warning here to make sure that you've already disabled your router's DHCP server, and we've already done that. So the last thing is to put in the router's IP address here. Just one thing to note if you go down this route is that your devices are probably all going to get new IP addresses, so you might have some configuring and figuring out to do. Here's the website OSX Daily, and I'll link to it in the description below if you're feeling brave. But here's what it looks like without Pihole enabled. You can see it's absolutely covered in ads. But if we take a look at the same page loaded after Pihole is enabled, you can see it's a much more pleasant experience. So how does this impact your favorite YouTubers? The answer is it doesn't really, because it doesn't block video ads because they're served from the same server as the actual content, so Pihole can't block them. It doesn't really matter anyways, because I make more money from affiliate links anyways. Oh wait, what? Maybe this wasn't such a good idea for a video. If Pihole is blocking access to a website you don't have a problem with, you can just copy the domain, go into the Pihole admin console, go to whitelist and paste the domain in there and click add. Once that's saved, you should be able to reload the original page and Pihole won't block it anymore. The opposite's true too if you want to block a domain, so you just go back to the Pihole admin console, go to blacklist and type in the domain name. Add exact will be an exact match to that domain, and add wildcard will match all subdomains too. And that's it for the first episode of pi to work Let me know if you have any comments or suggestions on this video, or if you've got any ideas for any future episodes, I'd love to hear them in the comments below. And that's it. Hopefully you enjoy your more ad-free experience now, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.